they're trying to distract you. The mainstream media, in collusion with the U.S. government, has released an army, a flock of wild geese, whether it's the make-believe fake attack by Iran on Israel that did absolutely no damage to anything whatsoever and changed absolutely nothing, or whether it's the hush money trial that rolled out today, or whether it's taxed or something else. They don't want you looking too closely at what they're doing in reality. What am I talking about? Baltimore Bridge Collapse could have had sinister origin as feds enter investigation. That's right. The FBI has opened up a criminal probe. Now, this is a huge shift from literally within 24 hours of the event where they completely ruled out any nefarious actors of any kind whatsoever. But words have meanings. See, I think a lot of folks out there have heard the word sinister before. But there's a definition of that word that I think would surprise a lot of people. Florida Maquis, I've heard the word sinister all the time. It's used in horror films. It's used to describe something ominous or boding or evil. Yes, that's correct. That's one definition. Look it up, though. It has another one. And that one will surprise you. I think that was code. This is, of course, Battlefield of the Mind stuff. This is what we talk about over at Patreon. God bless all of you. Thank you so much who have joined us over there. It's only one US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. Partnering with Vimeo, we can take the gloves off and we can talk about things the way we used to talk about them back in the 80s and 90s when you could hear guys like Andrew Dice Clay and Eddie Murphy and Sam Kinison and um, Dennis Leary and all these guys do their comedy routines. And if you think anything I've shown over there or said over there is bad, you might want to buckle up, Buttercup, because those were far worse. But we have even a bigger story to talk about today. Much bigger story. There has been something damn strange going on down in the Florida Keys for the last month or so, and I think now we have the tie-in. I think now we have the explanation. I'm sure a lot of you are looking at this going, what the hell kind of fish is this? Well, I'll tell you what, this would have been a tough one to explain back to the king 500 years ago. Can you imagine being the guy tasked with going to the king and saying, hey, king, you know, we found all sorts of strange stuff in the New World. But there's a fish. It kind of looks like a ray. It kind of looks like a shark. But it's got about a five-foot saw for a nose. Lined with barbs and teeth. Now, most people have thought you'd have been hitting the rum a little hard. But this was the case. They can grow up to seven meters long nose to tail. The underside of this fish contains nostrils, gills, and mouth, thousands of dome-shaped teeth to crush the small fish and crabs they prey on. The rostrum, the giant saw, 20 to 28% of the total body length, elongated toothed, pardon me, elongated toothed snouts called rostra are used for self-defense as well as to detect and hunt prey. Now here's the part, here's the part everyone needs to pay attention to. Three minutes, 43 seconds in. Sawfish have electroreceptors called ampullae or of Lorenzini. Ampullae of Lorenzini, or they're also called Lorenzini lines. Lorenzini covering their saw that help them to detect prey by using electric fields. Other sharks also have something like this. Now, what's been going on here in um, Florida, that's been so strange. Six rare sawfish deaths in seven days have scientists baffled amid bizarre Florida fish behavior. Here's what's been going on. They have been finding fish like the sawfish and others just swimming in circles. Absolutely just twisting around and swimming in circles and completely disoriented in the water until they die. Lots of them. And it's been going on for the past few months. Now, you might say, okay, Florida Maquis, what's happened recently that would explain this? Well, here's the first article I could find that explained it. February 24, 2024. Uh, fish and Wildlife investigates sawfish deaths and strange fish, fish behavior in Florida. 
Now, it had been going on prior to February, and it, I had heard stories about it late last year during the holidays. But it dawned on me, 21 February, 21 February, there was this massive blast. Now, this was the first of many that have come out of Antarctica. You've seen this. We've been talking about this now for the last week or so. I'm not going to bore you with all the details. Massive wave heights. My explanation, truly, I believe, huge Texas-sized amounts of fresh water have been dammed up underneath the glaciers in Antarctica, and something happened where they let go and huge plumes of this water got dumped into the thermohaline cycle, and it pushed up these giant bubbles of water on a couple of different occasions. Now, some might say, what does this have to do with the sawfish? Well, you'd have to understand how the thermohaline cycle works. Right where this occurred, this thermohaline cycle we've been talking about, takes that water, and it brings it up to the coast of basically Africa, and then it shoots straight across over to South America, this current runs right along the northeast coast of South America, dumps right in here into the Caribbean, down by the Panama Canals right here, Caribbean Sea, up into the Gulf of Mexico, and right through the Keys. It makes this turn right through the Keys. Now, I know this might be a bit of a leap, but if it's that amount of water, it can't possibly be completely pristine, meaning that it's probably bringing with it all sorts of crap and garbage and different things from beneath the glaciers from the continent. And it could very well have brought some type of a virus, some type of a pathogen, some type of a fungus, some type of anything, but it could definitely be something that is disorienting fish along that current. Now, some might say, Florida Maquis, why haven't we heard it anywhere else? Well, where this current is, and let's see if we can go back here real quick. Um, where this current goes, let me back it up here. You wouldn't probably hear anything until you got into the shallows of the Keys where people visually saw fish. You see here off the coast... They catch fish, but they don't actually go down and visually see them in their environment because the water's too deep. There have been other reports in other shallow water areas of the Caribbean of this same behavior, especially here along all these islands like St. Martin and, you know, all of these, um, these barrier islands. But it's not just a few. It's happened all over the place. They have lost their ability to navigate. They've been beaching themselves. And these giant, I guess, you know, they call them sawfish, rostrums, are full of electrical detectors. Now, I wonder if that water carries with it some type of a different charge, whether it's changing um, things just enough. These massive blasts causing this, and these are huge fish, but this has also been documented in smaller fish too that they have lost their ability to navigate. Now, connecting this to another story, skull of huge sea monster, Pliosaur, discovered in UK's Dorset Cliffs. This thing, this Pliosaur that they pulled out of the, the cliffs up in England, has a skull that is six feet long. The skull alone. Some have asked, Florida Maquis, if anything you're saying about what you believe in Antarctica is true, Where's the evidence for it? This is it. This is it. This image on the bottom here is one that I pulled off of Google Earth Pro in Antarctica. And it looks exactly like the scientific renderings of what these creatures were. Now, the one I found is far larger, but they keep finding them larger and larger and larger. This is the largest one by far. There was a time, and a lot of you will laugh, um, especially you um, millennials and younger. When we were kids, when we were kids, if you went to any teacher and asked, um, you know, what caused the dinosaurs to die out, when we were kids, before the uh, the meteor theory, um, there was uh, they would they would have told you some form of climate change, 
And if you would have asked them what was the largest dinosaur that ever lived, they would have said the brontosaur. Now, brontosaur doesn't even make the top five. And we all know now it was a meteor that killed off the dinosaurs, amongst other things. So you'd have gotten both of those, even though you would be right, you'd have gotten both those questions wrong in the 1970s and 80s. And this is kind of the thing about history. How we have the wrong people studying it. You show images like this and people laugh. And people say this is just out of uh, science fiction. You know, a creature, you know, this big that um, what, what they're trying to show here is looks like about a 15-foot great white shark um, being chased by this massive creature. It could very well have been. Could very, they just haven't found it yet. Because we have an entire continent full of things that are, well, let's see, what's the word? Kind of odd. I mean, can you imagine being the first guy that, exploring the new world, came across this shark with a massive saw attached to its nose? I mean, you probably would have had to rub your eyes twice. I mean, it's just absolutely bizarre. And alligators and crocodiles and the huge snapping turtles and everything else that existed here that didn't exist in um, Scotland, didn't exist in Ireland, um, didn't exist in Italy. You know, these things just didn't exist, you know, in their world. And they were brought back in stories through artwork and they were called largely crazy and nuts, but it always proved to be true. So this issue with Fantusky, this massive blast from February 21st, 2024, versus the first article written about it being February 24th, 2024, I don't think is any kind of a uh, coincidence. So here's February 21 and 22. And then we see this again in April. the 9th and the 10th. It really, to my mind, I don't want to kick a dead horse here, it really makes sense with what we had been told to expect. I think that they thought they might have been um, going to be witness to an event that would happen on the surface. But these massive plumes of cold, fresh water being dumped into the lower end of the hayline cycle that might not have been something they had on their bingo card. And like I said, I'll show this again. The current that would grab this, all of this, this brand new water, would have brought it express lane right to the Keys where they're seeing all of these strange fish behaviors. So maybe it's tied, maybe it's not, but I think it's a damn strange coincidence. I really do. And... It goes along with, you know, they are trying to distract you. I'm sure very few people caught this word about the Baltimore Bridge thing. Very few people caught the word sinister. It has a different meaning. Trust me, go look it up and it will make perfect sense. Absolute perfect sense as to who is actually responsible for this and why it was the Francis Scott Key Bridge, as opposed to any other. So, battlefield of mine. God bless all of you joining us at Patreon. I very, very much appreciate it. Making a huge, making a huge difference. We have had a lot of signups in the last month or two since the issue with the bridge and now this issue with uh, Ventusky. We are going to the next video. Um, we're not going to start over. But we're going to do a refresher on the 24 cognitive biases and the 24 logical fallacies. Those of you who have gone over there have probably noticed that you need to open up um, a browser window. You can't really use the app to find my stuff because they have me labeled as a channel for adults. Um, we're going to go through and we're going to take a deep dive into those cognitive biases, into those logical fallacies, because those are the tactics. Once you learn how to what they are, and the definition of them, that's just the beginning of it. Then you have to know how to weaponize it. Then once you know how to weaponize it, then you also have to know how to recognize when it has been weaponized against you. And that's, once again, this is what I did in the military. Psychological operations, human intelligence. 
using these tactics, using these techniques to manipulate the enemy into giving you the information that you need to win on the battlefield when they don't want to. They give it to you without you even, them even knowing. So anyway, that's what we do over there. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.